Hey, what is up guys? This is Ryan, your DIY guy. If you're new here, welcome. Go ahead, like and subscribe down below so you can catch this exciting content when it comes out. This is part two of an exciting backyard makeover series. And in part one, if you missed it, go and check it out. We were battling monsoon rains just to get the barbecue area or braai area as we call it in South Africa up and running, but we did it. Now for part two, we're heading on to the wooden pergola. So stay tuned. Coming up next on Nail and Screw. And as in part one, we got stuck in with the concrete foundation these are the footings that we've dug out for the four wooden posts that will be going into the ground but we're going to be placing a metal post bracket into the ground first and i'm surprised we did not find any diamonds here with the amount of rocks that came out of these holes but i told you this area was full of surprises now here we're determining the elevation of our metal post bracket that'll go in using a string line and a spirit level so we place the string line on the top end where the post bracket will stop and then we level out the string line with the spirit level and that'll give us the top height of our metal post bracket which came to roughly 65 centimeters which is about 25 inches so you can see the difference in slope but in a later project we're going to be leveling out the area so that the homeowner can enjoy a level surface Go and check out the tool review we did on the Bosch cordless circular saw. It's a nifty tool when you're doing woodwork, but we used it to cut out a 10 centimeter or about four inch recess of the wood, just a sliver so that it can fit into the metal post bracket. And then we cleaned it up with a hammer and a flat scraping tool. Next, we can go ahead and drill a few pilot holes in our metal post bracket, and this will allow us to secure it to our wooden posts. To do this, we are using a metal drill bit, which makes light work of this task before setting it back into the post hole. We reattach our string lines, which we took off earlier, and you can even see the square at the bottom lines up now perfectly with the corner of our string line. And once you've got your post now set in the location, whilst you're filling up with concrete, make sure to keep it true and plumb using a spirit level, as you see over here. Now, once it is full to the correct level, you also want to brace each of the posts so that they don't sway from side to side by any wind. And we use some cross bracing and we even secure them in the middle. Now hopefully you're not also going to be caught in a thunderstorm like we were but this is a good time once you've got all four of your posts in place to make sure that your structure is square and to do that you've got two options one of which is to measure from each opposite post and make sure that that dimension is equal if it is then you have a square structure and if not you've got to tweak it a little bit the second option is the 345 method, which is also called the Pythagoras theorem method. And if you wanna know more about that, go and check out the video in the top left-hand corner where we explain it in more detail. But once you're all true and square, make sure you brace your structure overnight so that your footings can cure out quite well. The next day came and then we simply removed all of our bracing to find that our structure is still solid and in place. So now we can go ahead and start with the canopy. With our bracing out of the way, we can go ahead and start marking off where we're gonna cut the height of each of the posts. Now keep in mind, this is a sloping landscape, so all of our posts are at different heights. And to get them at a consistent height, we start off with this corner post, which is the highest of all and we marked out just over two meters in height, which is adequate clearance for most people. And we placed a screw on the one end to hold our perimeter board. We then placed that on top and then used the spirit level to make sure we've got a parallel line running across to the other post, which just made it easy to mark out instead of using a tape measure. Once we had all those marks in place, we could go ahead and use the circular saw to cut off the excess uh, ensuring to remove any screws that we placed in there before.
A quick word from this episode's sponsor, that is PayingSocialMediaJobs.com. Yes, you heard that right. For doing what you already do, you can get incentivized because with most people who've been affected by the pandemic, now you can not only retain your landscape, but also retain that much needed income. Go and check out all the links down in the description below so that you can get directed straight to the money. With all the posts now cut to the right height, we decided to go ahead and treat each of them using a timber preservative called creosote, which prevents any rot and decay happening in the future. Now it's pretty smelly stuff, so make sure to wear the correct protection. The next day we could come back and then secure the top perimeter boards and you can see we've clamped it in place and simply drilled pilot holes for our cup square bolts to go through and on the opposite side we then drilled a recess using a hole saw where we could then use a securing nut to fasten them in place. With our perimeter boards now in place, we can go ahead and secure these wooden bracing pieces. They'll temporarily hold up our purlins whilst we locate them in their crisscross pattern. Wherever they intersect, we'll also secure them with a weather resistant screw and of course secure them to the perimeter boards as well. Not even monsoon rains could stop us from getting this far. And guess what? You've made it this far too. So go ahead and celebrate by smashing that thumbs up button. It tells YouTube's algorithm that this content is worth watching. And if you're not yet subscribed, go ahead and do that too, because it's free. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time on Nail and Screw.